seem to be the fall guy here. I mean, if whenever there's a lightning talk, people say, you know, go up and talk something, right? So I did the, I did the talk about Excel uh, day before yesterday. Uh, today I'll talk about... Because we love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I love you back. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, about myself, my name is uh, Nikhil Sontakke. I'm uh, uh, an co-organizer along with Samir uh, for this uh, Fiji Day Asia. Uh, I've been in the community for the last 10 years. Uh, uh, it's good to have my first boss, Fez, sitting here, who, who hired me 10 years ago in Enterprise TV. Uh, and that's how I got introduced to Postgres. And uh, been at it for the last 10 years now. Uh, so uh, this is the name of my company, Security TV. I'm the co-founder there. And basically, we are trying to provide encryption as a service. Uh, and I'll try to explain what we mean by that. Uh, uh, but first, before that, some preamble, right? Uh, a lot of sensitive customer data is in clear text. You, know, uh, you have uh, every website has a user uh, registration screen, you know, first uh, uh, user ID, password, uh, sensitive information about, you know, where they reside, what is their age, date of birth, and so on and so forth. And most of the data is stored in clear text. And we've seen umpteen number of breaches happening, right? I mean, uh, in the, especially in the US, uh, we have had uh, OPM and you know Target, Sony Online, and basically uh, uh, the most interesting one is Ashley Madison recently, right? I mean, the database was hacked, all the information was stored in clear text, and people were approached to pay ransom money, right? So that is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Uh, data store, you have a database which is good, but you know you're, if you're storing your data, sensitive data in clear text, then you are going to get uh, you know uh, setting up yourself for. Uh, some weird stuff that will come along your way, right, sometime soon. So, uh, basically in 2015, uh, there were 200 plus uh, data breaches, and only in uh, 10 or so cases was the actual data stored in Krippen. So, people got access to database dumps, or somebody hacked into their database machines, VMs, whatever, and then they just did a maybe a PG dump or something, or you know, whatever, select star from sensitive table, and it, all the data in all its glory was there for you to pillage and go through all the salacious details. They were all there for consumption outside. Right, so uh, only 4% of the data was encrypted, but we go, you got to ask, right, you know, why only 40%, why not, you know, a, a, a figure more than that? It's because uh, uh, whatever current encryption solutions that are out there, they are, expensive, uh, difficult to implement, and they're very time consuming. And uh, basically, you know, typically people have a database, and then they cannot say, okay, let's have a database solution, and let's have an encryption solution. You know, you need to marry them together. And you know, then that integration takes a lot of cost. You need to hire a crypto expert to actually verify that whatever you're using, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, not, it's not breakable, right? I mean, there's no point having a, crypto expert you know, who does, just does you know some kind of a simple hash or something right i mean somebody will actually go and you know break it up in a in a couple of days or something so you don't want that kind of you want ironclad security and peace of mind when you're thinking about encryption right so and that's why you know uh, when you actually talk about proper encryption enterprise gate then it becomes expensive it becomes difficult to implement and obviously it's time consuming you know you need to take time out of your uh, application programming life cycle. You know, spend time uh, to think about your cyber security, uh, a security solution. Think about how best to integrate it, and so on and so forth. Right? That uh, that takes away resources from your actual development. And at the end of the day, every web application developer, every application developer, every user, they just want to do their own thing, right? Security is important, but you know that is not their main concern. They just want to uh, run their health IT firm or their fintech firm, right? That is what they want to do. So, uh, and that is why they say, okay, let's get on with my stuff first. I will look at security later on, right? But then it leads to unpleasant things that come up, right? Okay, so uh, we, we've tried to address it uh, in some ways. Uh, so uh, security is a uh, cloud-based uh, encrypted uh, uh, backend as a service product. Uh, our main uh, product is a uh, uh, identity management because that is where the maximum amounts of breaches happen. So basically, yeah. uh, uh, let's say you are starting a new uh, website, uh, a hike and bike website. You know, so you have a typically you have all of these screens, right? 
there will be a registration screen, there will be a sign-in screen. Uh, every user will have a profile where there will be sensitive information about that user. And you will need to provide stuff like reset password, forgot password, two-factor authentication, and so on and so forth. Right? So uh, basically, people can just uh, use our uh, uh, REST APIs over HTTPS, and then they get all of this functionality out of the box. And all of that sensitive data is stored inside our servers or base Postgres uh, automatically without the user have to do, uh, worrying about anything. So yeah, I mean, what, what are we replacing, right? For developers, you know, we are replacing three plus months of development time, uh, savings and costs, and uncertainty about the security of customer data. They can rest in uh, ease, uh, you know, saying that, okay, my sensitive information is uh, uh, in place, uh, is, in, is taken care of. Uh, compliance is a huge, huge factor. Uh, if you're talking about health, uh, health tech firms or financial firms, you know, compliance, uh, regulatory compliance, HIPAA is for the health industry, PCI is for the payment card industry, right? So they have to have to ensure that whatever data they are storing, it is stored in a encrypted form, right? So uh, with us, they get that as well. Uh, yeah. So as I said, you know, you don't have to write uh, any lines of crypto code. Uh, it just you know takes a few minutes to set it up, and then you can just uh, have uh, encrypted uh, uh, encryption as a service uh, in place. Uh, we also have some dashboard which can give you some analytics. Uh, for example, uh, if somebody is trying to hack in, and you will see all of a sudden you will see hundred failed attempts in the last ten, ten second, ten minutes or so, right? And somebody is really trying to do something, right? So uh, let's say a user logged in usually logs in from Singapore. And then at the next moment, uh, uh, he appears logging from India. You know what's going on there, right? How can the same user log uh, from uh, India within a span of two hours? You know somebody is trying to do something funky there. You know so uh, this kind of user behavior and analytics can be done with our platform as well, right? And uh, we're also working on uh, data exfiltration. So all of all of this basically uh, is uh, is, a, is a part of that. Uh, yeah, and you know. There are like so many developers out there. Approximately a million will need strong encryption, and we are trying to, you know, for various reasons, the compliance needs are only going to grow. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, let's get to the Postgres angle, right? So, uh, we uh, modified Postgres skill to implement TDE. TDE stands for Transparent Data Encryption. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so SecureDB is a uh, uh, PKCS 11 compliant. So key management is a very important piece in any encryption offering. What, where do you store your master key, right? I mean, uh, if you're using PG Crypto, for example, you know where does that key reside? You know, it cannot be on a flat file, right? In, in fact, that is the standard mistake everybody does. You know? Just store that data in a flat file and assume that you know, nobody will look at it. <laughs> that doesn't work like that. So key management is a very, very key. Uh, piece of this, and SecureDB uh, uh, is PKC is 11 compliant. Uh, we have uh, uh, integration with AWS KMS. AWS is a key management service. And uh, basically, uh, when our Postgres instance starts, uh, it connects to the AWS to get the uh, decrypted key. And uh, what we did was we modified the page layout, the Postgres page layout, the ATP page layout, and we added 32 bytes uh, uh, at the end uh, of each page. Uh, just, uh, I mean, the, there's a special area, right, on the page. Uh, after that, we added 32 bytes, and that is where we store the initialization IV and the authentication uh, code for that page, right? So, uh, in some ways, this is similar to the checksum that we have nowadays uh, on the page layout, right? So, uh, basically, when you're writing a new version of that page, uh, a new uh, IV is generated, and using that IV, and the uh, uh, master key, <coughs> you generate an encrypted version of that page. And uh, in our case, uh, the encryption algorithm creates the same size buffer as the past in clear text data, right? So uh, that is the beauty. I mean, otherwise it won't, it won't work, right? I mean, if you take 8192 minus 32 bytes, right? And you, if you pass it to your encryption function, it needs to return back the same size buffer. Otherwise, you know, the page will overflow and you will not have proper data, right? So yeah, our, our algorithms ensure that you get back the same amount of encrypted data, uh, the, the same size, right? And uh, this is while writing down, and when you're reading, obviously you first 
before it gets into the shared buffers, you have to first decrypt that data using the, again, the ID that is stored. So basically, the storage manager reads that page, looks at the last 32 bytes, gets the ID, and uses that to decrypt the uh, uh, information, and then gives it back to the, into the shared buffers, right? So that is what we've done so far. Uh, to be D, you know, uh, as of now, we've done a TD for uh, table pages. And I think uh, 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 many solutions out there are just OK with that. I think MySQL also does that. Even SQL Server, I just I think, just does uh, uh, relation pages uh, encryption, uh, TD. So we are there. But obviously, uh, we should also be encrypting the wall logs. Uh, and uh, in the future, uh, uh, right now, the encryption key is for the entire cluster. Uh, but in the future, we plan to provide encryption keys, keys per database, and uh, also per table space as we go ahead. Uh, the second important component is called as the uh, security encryption gateway. And for that, uh, we modified pgpool. Uh, so here again, when pgpool starts up, uh, it gets a, the key from uh, AWS KMS. And then it also consults a local metadata uh, uh, postgres database. And that database contains uh, a key for each column that needs encryption support. Right, so uh, based on it, we have different types of encryption, probabilistic, deterministic, tokenization, hashing. And uh, based on your requirements, a specific key will be stored there. And uh, when it starts up, it basically concerns that uh, and gets the uh, keys for each uh, uh, column that needs encryption. Uh, and when, it, uh, and when, it, when, when a query comes in, it walks that query. It identifies which columns are being accessed. It, it ascertains whether that column needs encryption or not. And if it does, it does it on the fly and then basically it modifies the query, right? So just to give you an example, let's say you have a, uh, uh, you have a table and you said that the this first name column needs to be encrypted, right? So this query comes in from uh, uh, the application. It reaches uh, the security encryption gateway, our, our modified version of PG pool. And what it does is when it walks the query, it identifies that this column is an encrypted column, right? And then on the flag, it converts that uh, into a form which will be understood later by the uh, database, right? So the, the above query gets converted from select star from table where uh, our, our internal name for this column equal to this encrypted value, right? So basically it takes that uh, this nickel s value, it applies the encryption key that is assigned for that column and rewrites that query into this new form. Because this is how the data is stored inside uh, Postgres, right? And uh, any questions here? Yeah. And, and what about the data that you will see? Like the first name will also be part of your output set. Yeah. So will it be the same gibberish text, or is it going to no, be? So, so this is the invert query. Uh, when the result comes back, uh, PG pool uh, it's decrypted it, it's it's first before it's sent and out. And PG pool is talking to a, a key store, and it is parsing your query. So in that query parser of PG pool, you have done modifications so yeah. that it can do the replacement. So exactly. star is expanded for every column, and right. whichever column is encrypted, you replace that with the PG crypto function. So Not PG crypto, our, our I mean, your yeah. own cryptic uh, cryptography yeah. function. Yeah. Using uh, AES-256 based uh, encryption keys, and uh, uh, it's like a state-of-the-art standard of, uh, encryption that is out there, right? And obviously, we've added for sip, uh, support for inserts, uh, basically, if you're doing a migration from vanilla Postgres to our version of Postgres, you'll have a PG dump. And basically, then it will be run via the gateway. And it will convert all of those columns uh, involving the insert into encrypted form using the keys from the meta store, and then store it inside uh, Postgres. Right? So yeah, there's support for inserts, update, delete queries. Uh, uh, we also added support for join. Yeah. How much overhead does it add for the Encryption, uh, encryption uh, nowadays has become pretty performant. I mean, there have been a study where uh, the encryption uh, is, uh, the throughput is like 2 GBPS. Uh, GB yeah, right? Not the encryption itself, but going through the gate, your gateway, figuring out the uh, which So over uh, uh, vanilla PG pool, we compared our stuff and it's uh, 2 to 5%. Okay. And that's an acceptable uh, overhead for somebody who wants encryption, right? I mean, they are okay with that kind of an overhead. Right. So. Yeah, and uh, we also have support for joint queries. And uh, uh, the road ahead is, you know, we can obviously, you know, keep on uh, rewriting more complex queries, right? I mean, Postgres uh, 
we had a customer who gave us like a 300 uh, you know uh, characters query right it was like really weird you know there was like subselects and you know further subselects and weird joins and aliases everywhere right so uh, obviously our uh, rewriter right rewriting logic needs to understand a lot more but uh, having said that there's very basic support for uh, inserts updates deletes and joins and all of that is it going to affect the query plan like no. you say your stuff? No. So it's a basically the encrypted column is a varchar type and you can have indexes on that inside Postgres, right? So do you replace the columns with, with an encryption function only when it is equated to a literal or do you also convert it when it is equated to another column, like in case of joins? <coughs> no, so I mean if it's a table dot call A equal to table two dot call B. Uh, that will go as is in sizes, yeah. And even in case of literals, you convert, so you actually apply the encryption on the literal itself. So actually it will use indexes, right? Yeah. yeah. So we uh, encryption can support equality based yeah. searches. Uh, because they're not applying the function of the column itself, it is right. on the literal rather. They're moving on the other side. And yeah, but, uh, but your comparison would work only if, you know, they're using the same keys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, they're yeah. not, then it will not give you the same result, right? Yeah. And it, yeah, it also has to use deterministic kind of encryption. Otherwise, yeah, if it is yeah. probabilistic, then uh, the, the values will be different in both the tables. Mm -hmm. So it depends on that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically the architecture. Uh, your web app, your mobile app will basically talk to uh, what we call as the gateway, which is PG pool in our case, and it will be speaking over HTTP as always. And uh, basically, uh, uh, we have these uh, REST APIs, which will be uh, the, uh, so. The, so the applications will be using REST APIs to talk to, uh, to, uh, to which is our Java Tomcat layer. And then that will be internally uh, uh, doing queries against the gateway. The gateway will automatically uh, rewrite that query into its encrypted form and basically store it uh, inside the TDE enabled database, right? Now this could, uh, the, the database could be uh, vanilla Postgres, it could be AWS RDS, it could be any version of Postgres, right? Or if you want to use us, uh, you get uh, two levels of encryption uh, security. The, the gateway provides column level encryption, and if you choose our version of uh, security we post this database, it will also give you TDE, right? So uh, some people have TDE needs as well. Uh, data at rest has to be stored encrypted, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of demand for this from enterprises, basically. I mean, initially we thought it will be a developer play, but uh, enterprises are the one which say, you know, hey, I want to use this inside our own virtual private cloud. You know, so that's what, uh, so basically you can just, uh, we provide an AMI which contains all of these components and you can just spin it up inside your virtual uh, private cloud and just point it, point to it and start using the endpoints, right? Okay, that's what I had. Any questions, if any? So um, I imagine you face a lot of migration issues, right? Like from, uh, like you'd have to do a lot of migrations to get people on board with your project. So how do you do that? Do you have to like uh, tunnel everything through your gateway to get them uh, DDE, or is that a way that you can do run, like run copy and have that encrypted? So typically, you know, we, they might not want to uh, migrate their entire database, right? I mean, they, they would identify, okay, that these are these three, four tables that need uh, encryption, and they would do a, give a, PG dump of that, and what we would do is basically run it uh, via the gateway, okay. which will encrypt uh, all the columns on the fly. And then uh, what we, we have something called as a hot switch. Uh, basically, uh, if, it, if there's a table X, we create an X underscore SEG, we load into that, and then at the last moment, we basically just do a, a rename of that. We rename the old table to X underscore old, and we rename the new to X underscore, from X underscore sec to X, right? So that can minimize the downtime and all of that. So yeah, that's possible. Okay. Thank you.